My grandmother showed me what she had in her trunk. All I remember her saying was, these are your grandpa's papers. And um, it didn't dawn on me that they were real important papers. I just knew they were my grandpa's papers. We came down here whenever in the latter, latter part of the 1800s. Between that and, and now, very little is known by the Otos. We're the only tribe that Lewis and Clark met on this expedition that was removed. The rest of them have been allowed to stay. None of the other Indian tribes in, in Oklahoma, you know, met that expedition. In 1803, the United States doubled in size. President Thomas Jefferson's Louisiana Purchase expanded America by nearly 600 million acres of land. Land where our people had lived. Land that had been nurtured and cultivated by our ancestors. Within a year, the Corps of Discovery led by Meriwether Lewis and William Clark had begun its exploration of the newly acquired land. During their 28-month journey, the explorers would encounter nearly 50 tribes. The first council was with my tribe, the Oto, Missouri. On August 18, 1804, near present-day Sioux City, Nebraska, the Otos and the Americans held a grand meeting, an international summit between our two great nations. Lewis and Clark brought gifts, peace medals and certificates of friendship, among other items to help build relationships as they traveled through the frontier. I'm imagining they'd uh, recognize something that come from uh, strange people at that time, trying to make a way uh, uh, in friendship. And maybe they felt a little more safe that they were going to not go into extinction or something like that, but be wiped out by somebody else. And so I know that one of the things they were trying to do was try to not only keep the Indians from making war with the white people, but also with each other. Through storms and heat, warfare and travel, even after removal from our lands, our ancestors took great care to preserve and protect these documents. Not only did these papers hold the words of the president, they also held promises that were made to our people. Thomas Jefferson envisioned a fertile land for us west of the Mississippi River, but we were forced to settle on land that the Americans did not want. Still, we protected these papers. My grandfather, Richard Sonatona, decided to give this written letter from Thomas Jefferson to Oklahoma. It was a letter probably that Thomas Jefferson wrote to a series of chiefs or Indian dignitaries that came to Washington, D.C. I found out that the papers were of some importance when my grandmother passed away. Um, when she was staying with me, when she got where she couldn't take care of herself, I brought her trunks to my place. Then I took them to my uh, mother's and we all were going through the trunks and getting um, things out that we needed. That's when my brother found the papers and that's when I knew what the papers were. A lot of different things went through my mind about where to put them and what to do with the papers. I knew if I kept them, they wouldn't be in existence very long because they were um, on the verge of deteriorating. And I wanted to keep them in Oklahoma because that's where our tribe is. That's where we are. And I want the papers to be where um, the tribe and especially the children and grandchildren um, could see these documents and know uh, where they came from and what they meant, you know, to the tribe. The uh, 
royalty and leadership of the family that we represent gives us a, a, a lot of pride within ourselves. These papers, like our people, will live in Oklahoma for eternity. The promise they now hold is to tell the everlasting story of our heritage. Future generations will forever know about the day our ancestors met with Lewis and Clark in the great meeting between two nations. These papers have been cherished and protected by our people for centuries, and we are proud to share them today with the state of Oklahoma and with the nation in which we all now live. <laughs>